Hello and welcome to the Oi Let's Talk podcast. I'm Kate. And I'm Gemma. Two friends talking fitness, mindset, business and everything else in between. We really mean everything. Expect banter, education and organised chaos. Your Your new new podcast podcast besties. besties. Welcome back to another episode of Oi Let's Talk. Today, out of all days, we could definitely say that this episode is going to be spicy. We I know chose violence. We chose violence. I know that we say spicy a lot, but this is for sure going to be spicy. So strap in because the goal is to lift the standard of the fitness industry. And I Amen. Think, and I think the best way to do that is to identify some of the shortcomings mm. and some of the red flags. So today we are talking all about online coaching, coaching in general, red flags for potential clients looking for a coach, what to look out for so you have the best experience possible. And no, this isn't just going to be will get coached by us, obviously. It's duh. (laughs) duh. It is honestly just a guide of things that I would call a red flag to look out for so you basically have the best experience possible. Mm. Yeah, And it really is about having the best experience possible because we know as coaches, if you get a bad coach, it can really tarnish your fitness outcomes. Going back to the gym, when I first started, I'm sure I've mentioned this on the podcast before, I got a PT, I have a mild heart condition. I said, I can't run. He chucked me on the treadmill for 45 minutes doing interval sprints. I didn't go back to the gym for probably two years because of that, because I thought every personal trainer was gonna get me to get on a treadmill and run, and I was going to be physically ill. A bad experience can really be a make or break Mm -hmm. as to whether you continue on with training. Mm. I know if you got given a coach and got really poor nutrition advice, that can impact the way that you you know, enjoy food. Mm. It can put you in that mindset of good, bad, restrict, cut. So I think that it's really important to know what to look out for to protect yourself. And Mm. so you can basically just keep being a fitness baddie and feel really good about it. Mm. And something I want to preface, if you're a coach and you are listening to this episode, do better. Absolutely. Like if you don't know something, it's okay to say you don't know. It's okay to refer out. It's okay to not sell a meal plan when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't actually need to know everything. And I feel like as a coach, a lot of people fall into this box of being like, well, I'm a coach. Like I'm on a pedestal for my clients. I need to be able to help them. I need to be able to service them. I need to be able to do everything for them. But that's actually a red flag for me. If I find a coach that thinks they know everything, I'm running the opposite direction because nobody knows everything. And if you try to do everything and you work outside of your scope, you're not working within integrity Mm. and you're also potentially putting your clients at harm, which one is terrible for your business. And two, it's just not the way you want to run a business, essentially, Mm. like you're going to do more harm than good. Mm. And clients will respect you saying, I don't know that or this person's better for that. Mm. And that will actually create better relationships with your clients going forward. Yeah. Yeah. So what's one of your coaching red flags? I would say there's quite a lot in the online coaching space. And I also just want to add a bit of a backstory to this because we both coach people online. And when Mm. clients come to us, they will always tell us like previous coaching experiences or Mm. or whatever that may be. Um, So we do kind of get hear this quite a lot. Um, I would say when I think about nutrition, I've heard clients Mm. say, you know, The previous coach I had (laughs) put me on um, like a really low meal plan or told me I had to avoid X, Y, Z. And then it just ended up making me want to binge. This this makes me sweat. Like this topic makes me sweat. So I don't know if you guys know. Sorry, I'm jumping in for a second. Go for it. I don't know if you guys know. I'm a qualified nutritionist. I've done my bachelor's degree. I did my time at uni. I did my time working as a nutritionist in a clinic. And I have worked with so many very, very, very unwell people. You then flip into the fitness industry and these unwell people are going to people in the fitness industry that don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And it's so damaging. Yep. And it boils my blood. I used to think that I had to be a martyr to like save the industry from this. And I realized that that's not my core purpose in life, but 
it's really quite scary and it's really quite damaging. So the one thing I would be looking out for in a coach is do they actually have the credentials to be teaching you and guiding you in the way that they are? So for example, if you come across a coach who's saying blood work specialist, are you a fucking doctor? Or are you a PT who did your cert three and four? Yeah. And any kind of further qualification, like what further studies have you done? Yeah. Because there's definitely smaller kind of courses you mm. can do. And ideally, work, like you need to understand what that actually mm. um, allows you to service within your industry because everything will have limitations. Exactly. And like I can read blood work. I know how to do it. Do I ever read my client's blood work? Absolutely fucking not. Because it is not in my scope. And there's so many kind of cans of worms that I think about Mm. in terms of people kind of get stuck in these like trendy topics. So say we're talking about gut health. (laughs) Gut health's a really big one where I used to see it a lot and I just like... It's just an instant red flag to me. For example, talking from a place of um, like an expert, uh, say you've done your cert three and four, and then you're talking about how Mm. to heal your gut and having all of these things with just that education. Sure, you can say this is what's helped my gut. We'll use as an example, lived experience, anecdote. But I, I don't think like there's not enough knowledge and even an endocrinologists even people who like focus purely on hormones or gut they will tell you how much of a wildly diverse Mm -hmm. and still don't even know all of the kind of answers Mm -hmm. because there's just so much to it so how is a cert three and four pt knowing more than them they're not exactly and even looking at those people who do specialize actually looking at their credentials. And I'm not saying that everyone on the internet, like you need to go through all of their credentials. Obviously use your own brain and your wits about you, but I would be very, very mindful of who I am actually paying to work to work with. I would just be very mindful if you're coming out of your cert three and four as a coach entering the industry, either do further studies and become fully qualified and don't sell things that you don't know what you're talking about. It's so damaging. And be aware of what you do know and its limitations. Mm -hmm. Like you could say, I'm learning this or I've tried this for myself, but you can't come at it from the angle of I'm an expert Mm. because we just purely don't know Mm, enough. Exactly. And it gives people this false sense of safety and trust and it's misguided if you Mm. don't have the qualifications to back that. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And also you can get yourself into a lot of fucking trouble. Yeah. Insurance wise. I'm sure. Yeah. And unfortunately the fitness industry is not regulated. It should be a regulated industry. I really think that it should, but that's a topic for another day. Unfortunately it's not, but if down the track, something was to happen, people can sue you. Yeah. It is their health. Yeah. It is their physical movement, their physical fitness that you're fucking with. So just be really, really careful. Yeah. I think because this is such a broad topic, I'd love to break it down into the kind of key Mm. things that I think of in terms of when you're looking for a coach. Yeah. The first thing I'd touch on, which is what we've just spoken about, which is nutrition. So just making sure that depending on what it is that you need Mm. from a coach, that they can provide it. Like if somebody came to me and they said that they have a whole list of issues with nutrition or a history of um, a binge eating disorder, referring out like our coaches um proactively do they have a team of people that they work with and refer out to that's a positive yeah so i think that depending on what your needs are look for someone who can cater to that and can support that with qualification and insurance yep and don't get stuck in um just because someone has really good marketing and just because they have a big social media following Mm. doesn't equate (laughs) i know this is obvious but it should be said doesn't equate to the most knowledgeable or Mm. the most qualified in the industry. Yep. The second part would be when we're talking about actual exercise and programming, we're wanting to make sure that there's no bullshit advice. So things I would look out for would be really clickbaity black and white ways of thinking in the fitness industry. You have to do this to get, you can't do that. Um, you know, tone tone this shape this like i think that there's just certain really clickbaity words Mm. which i one there's kind of people want you know clicks but are they explaining themselves Mm. in the caption are they able to reference something so i think that that's really important when looking Mm. for programming you really want people to be able to provide information that is 
site like research backed yeah and they can explain themselves well because that is a good indicator that they know what they're talking about agree i think the third thing that i would be looking out for if i was looking for a coach do i get along with that person yeah do they actually have the same values as me the things that i'm looking for that i need help with and do i know that they're going to have good levels of communication because i think that that's very important when you're hiring a coach you want to know that you have a level of maybe not friendship. I mean, whatever, I'm friends with a lot of my clients, but maybe not deep as level as friendship, but you have that level of trust. You have that level of communication, that level of commitment and connection with them to be able to put your best foot forward. I feel like when you get with a coach, get with a coach, that sounded really bad. When you start working with a coach and your personalities just don't match, it's going to be quite hard for you to progress forward. And I think that's also, that's okay as well. Oh, it's like fine, yeah. There could be 10 great coaches, but if you find the one that you resonate with and you look up to or you respect yep. a lot, that's going to go a long way with you trusting the information that mm. they give you, you wanting to be more accountable. It's really actually important to look for that personality type as well as them being good at what they do. Yeah. Yeah. One more thing that I would also look for is like, what is their level of contact that I can have with this person? So, you know, if I'm hiring a coach and they don't, for me personally, I want to be able to message them during the week and ask for questions or send form videos or ask for feedback on a meal that I made. If that coach is not offering, you know, Monday to Friday access to be able to message, that probably is not going to be the coach for me. So what are the, the contact points where I can actually get in, in contact with them if I need help? And another question that I would ask would be, what is your um, responsiveness time typically? Because yes. I think that's really important. Yeah. It's one thing to say, you can contact me Monday to Friday, but if, if you ask a question and you reply three days, days later, it's probably not going to be overly supportive mm. in that aspect. On the flip side, just being clear on what it is they can offer because yeah. it's going to vary depending on your needs. So mm. when I say on the flip side, I mean, if a coach says from the get go, you know, my, I usually respond within, you know, one to two hours, um, Monday to Friday. So, you know, if you message mm. me after 7 PM on a Monday, you'll get a response the next day. Yeah. If that's clear from the get go, you know how you can get best supported by them. But if they're vague and they don't have kind of like clear contact hours and you don't really know where you stand, it's going to be mm. really hard to feel like you are accountable and supportive yeah. to them. And it's going to be hard for you to feel like, okay, well, can I message them? Am I being annoying? You want to know, or what, when I go into a coaching space, I want to know that if I have a question, I can plug in. I know the hours that I'm going to get a response time in. I know the, um, I know the hours that I can contact them in and it's happy days. There's yep. no resistance. There's no me feeling like, oh, maybe I'm being annoying. It's just smooth sailing, which means my results, the things that I'm working towards are going to be smoother sailing as well. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to touch on a few other just smaller points that I think are important, which is when I contact a coach, how are they responding to me? Mm. Is that in a like you know clear, professional, timely manner? Because mm. that's probably going to be a good indication as to how future correspondence would be. Absolutely. If somebody you know reached out, sorry, let's use another example. If I reached out to somebody to work with them, and one they took seven days to reply, or they responded really flirty as an example, mm. or they gave me a really generic reply. Like that was just a copy and that paste. That was just a copy and paste that wasn't customized. Yeah. To me, I would think, okay, I'm probably just a number. I'm, you know, potentially they have a whole lot of clients and mm. it's just not going to be very personalized. Mm-hmm. That's kind of things that I would look out for versus on the flip side, if I was to reach out to someone and they kind of sent me a nice email and they asked me genuine questions, mm. it's a really good foot to start off with. Yeah. Or if they didn't even use your first name. Do you yeah. know how many coaches I've reached out to and they're just like, hi. Yeah. Like, hi, Kate. My name's Kate. Yeah. I like to be addressed by Kate. I think that's really nice. I think that's really nice as well. And I think the only way that I would ever reply being like, hey, babe, or hey, girl, is if they've already opened the message saying, hey, babe, to me. Yeah. But I think, yeah, like, let's, coaches, let's treat people like they're humans, not numbers. Absolutely. And let's go a step further. So you're working with a coach. Mm. What are some things that I would say are a red flag Mm. if you're a client and you're like, oh, this isn't really feeling great. Mm. There's a few that I would say kind of are just obvious ones, which would be 
really inconsistent, like ghosting. I've heard mm, of like people getting coached by people God. and then they get ghosted by their coach as in <sighs> not replying to them, not checking in, not programming, which seems so bizarre, but it does actually happen. And that's I not- can't even believe like that baffles me. 100%. One, you're just actually daylight robbing people and taking their money for no fucking reason. Yeah. That is the shittest thing. Yeah. And two, you're also leaving someone in the dark who potentially has started a journey that they have no idea what they're doing and they need your support. Yes. And you're literally just ghosting them like you go someone on fucking Tinder. Come it's, on. It's honestly... That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And I wouldn't have believed that it's a thing if I didn't wow. literally get told today by somebody about something similar happening and so again if you have a coach and you invest in coaching and somebody says at the start that they're going to do all of these things and they don't actually do them Mm -hmm. don't be afraid to call them out on it and to find better because that is not the standard that we want in the industry we want people to be very clear about how they're able to help people and them to follow through with Mm -hmm. that as the bare minimum the bare fucking minimum. That's ridiculous. It is. I'm actually shook. Yeah. So there's that. There's the ghosting and not being very responsive when mm. they say, you know, within their hours that they're going to be. Another would be not actually providing a customized service Before. in terms of cookie cutter programming. Promoting a custom service. Yes. Yeah. Promoting custom nutrition and then giving everybody the same meal plan. Yeah. Giving ev- anyways, meal plans also could be a topic that if you guys well, want to hear a, my thoughts on meal plans, <laughs> our thoughts on meal plans, let yeah. us know. Yeah. Giving the same meal plan, giving the same nutrition, giving the same advice, copying pasting bullshit. Like yeah. if you're that busy as a coach and you cannot customize a program, yeah, probably reduce your workload. You're probably at full capacity. Stop taking on clients. Couldn't agree more. There's going to be core exercise in everyone's program. Of course. That's like a whole a different thing. We have to do a hinge. We have to do a yeah. squat, etc. But if somebody tells you, you know, um, I can only work out for 45 minutes a session because I'm busy and I can do three sessions. Mm. And then you just get given this program that completely doesn't align with your needs that means that one you're not really being listened to two yeah. it's not customized yeah. and if that's what you've come to pay for then that is a massive red yeah. flag and of course we need to be let's give coaches a little bit of love for a second yeah of, of course. course we're human we yeah. forget things you have conversations with people it happens yeah but if it's like an actual thing that your coach should remember not on no and i think like that's the difference between you know making a mistake once yeah. and the systemic it issue is is. of yeah. every single client having the same experience no. because i think that is when it's no mm. it's actually not good enough you need to do better mm. yeah another coaching red flag for me that if i was looking for a coach i would be mindful of or if i'm already in the coaching intake is having a one size fits all approach or it's their way or the highway So I know that there's obviously a lot of coaches and Jem, me and you, we love weight training. So maybe we'd fall a little bit in that basket. Mm -hmm. But if my client comes to me with a specific goal to run a marathon, even if I'm not a marathon runner and I know how to help her, I'm not going to give her a program that is just weight based because I prefer resistance and weight training. It's not my way or the highway it's actually what your client wants so being able to listen to their end goal and tailor something i guess this kind of ties into what we said just then but tailoring something toward what they actually want instead of just being like well weight training is the only way to lose weight or weight training is the only way to grow your glutes it's like there is other ways that still work it doesn't just have to be your way or the highway. And I think taking a collaborative approach mm. is really important and looking actively looking for coaches who are kind of hands-on in yep. that element. And when I think of just had a brain freeze. That's okay. You can come back. I was just swallowing water aggressively into That's the fine. mic. So. Let me think. That's oh, fine. sorry. When I think, no, it's gone, it's gone again. again. That's all right. Can I do another coaching red flag? Go for it. Another coaching red flag for me would be posting on Instagram, not replying to your message for four days. I've honestly never heard of that. That's terrible. So like I've had coaches in the past. Actually, I've got another one as well. I've had coaches in the past, post on Instagram, post on Instagram, my message three days overdue, four days overdue, five days overdue, no response, still posting on Instagram. I mean, that's, that's silly. 
Yeah, especially when yeah you're. Mm. It's if it's during business hours. Mm. There's no not really any excuse. Mm. Is are you getting the deliverables that you paid for exactly in a timely manner? And those deliverables will vary. Like of you course. can't expect X Y Z from a coach if you've just paid for program only. Of course, monthly check in yes. for example. It obviously has to marry up with what they've agreed to and what mm. you've agreed to. But if you've agreed to X Y Z, let's use the example weekly check ins contact during the week via mm-hmm. whatsapp or email and a customized program and if you're not getting the bare minimum that you signed up for which is the reason that you've engaged in that mm. relationship then it's time to move on mm. yeah agree the other thing i was going to mention it's finally come back to me is you've mentioned before having a one size fits all or my way or the highway approach mm. i would also say i would proactively look for coaches who are open-minded mm. and have many tools in their toolbox do they agree do they only give meal plans and do they only make everybody track macros or mm. are there other options such as some sort of basic nutritional kind of plate model plate hand model, model knowledge yeah. there that is going to help you because mm. everyone's in different stages and everyone has different needs so it's important that what you need and your, where you're at is going to align with the fact that you're not going to get stuck in a box of having to do things a certain way let's use the worst case possible situation you're a gym newbie who wants to get into training and you choose a really rigid coach who only has limited ways of doing things and they say okay train five days a week meticulously track your macros Mm -hmm. um you have to follow this meal plan and that's it like if you don't do it you're not dedicated enough Mm -hmm. that is a red flag in itself because one as a coach you need to be meeting clients where they're at and two you need a lot of things in your arsenal to arsenal just sounds wrong so sorry (laughs) (laughs) sorry Uh, we just need to we need to be able to cater we are children Uh, we need to be able to cater to so many different people so again let's use the best case scenario that gym newbie whatever their needs are they have the option of maybe some meal inspo in terms of recipes Mm -hmm. or macros if they're keen to learn or a plate model learning how to eat out without all of that Mm. Um, and they have multiple different options and varieties with programming Mm. that would make me feel like I am being accommodated for listened to and that also makes it feel like it's more sustainable because it's actually giving me what I need for where I'm at and also from the coach's perspective it's like if you have a client who's coming in to work with you who says they can only or maybe they're new maybe they've got gym anxiety or they say they can only train three times a week because they're busy and you give them a five day a week program they're already going to feel like they're failing before they've started because it's unachievable for them. It's honestly such a big thing. It is huge. I've heard so many people say, oh, you know, um, I just don't think I can stick with it because I just don't Mm. have the time. And it's like, no, you don't have to have every single day dedicated to the gym. You you would be smashing it if you trained three days a week. Yep. Like if you trained three days a week over a three month period, that is far more beneficial than going really hard for a month and realizing you can't keep it up and then dropping off. And never doing it again. And never doing it again. It doesn't have to be this Mm. negative thing that you're resisting all the time or Mm. you feel like you, again, like you're failing. It can be a positive thing if it actually works for you not against you. Mm. But that's the thing. Like, you know, of course, as well, if your coach is not listening to you as you start training together. So for example, say you're four months into your coaching program, you've gone really well at hitting your three days a week in the gym. You're fucking nailing it. Everything's going good. And you decide that you're ready to up the ante and go for a fourth session. Yep. And you ask your client for a fourth program and they never give it to you. Sorry, you ask your your coach for your fourth program (laughs) and they just never give it to you or they refuse to give it to you, or they tell you that you're not ready. Yeah. I think it's really important that as a coach, if your client's asking for something, something, let them try it. Yeah. I mean, what the worst thing that can happen is that they can't keep up. We can pull it back. Absolutely. They can't increase their intensity. No worries. We can drop it back. It's all good. I um, also have another topic because I have a personal experience and I think this is a bit of a spicy, not spicy, but like mm. semi-sensitive gonna, topic. Um, share my water That's with so you fun. because I feel like you're going to get really parched I throughout parched. this. This is really great for the ASMR. Mm. There you go. <laughs> but I have, I have a topic I want to talk about mm. that I think is kind of a sensitive topic, right? But I really want to highlight this as well. So if anyone feels uncomfortable, they know that Mm. that they don't have to. They can leave the coach that they're with. But if you are a female client 
and you have a male coach. And if any time in that relationship, you feel like there are any inappropriate comments or anything that just makes you feel Mm -hmm. like we're blurring the client coach relationship, relationship, Mm -hmm. then please find another coach because you shouldn't feel that way. I just wanted to mention it because when I first was coached by Mm -hmm. someone, um, there was just a few comments about the fact that, um, it was just like just a few like little comments about my my face. I'm like, what no, did this motherfucker no, say? It wasn't, it wasn't even that bad. This mm. is like low level, mild things, but still just wanted to say like mm. bit of an ick, just like little comments about my body, but then not just that, like pushing me into um, that I should compete. And I had never mentioned it yeah. and I wasn't interested. Mm. And I was like in the infancy of getting into the gym and mm. I kind of didn't like the perceived pressure there of, you know, oh, you should compete because of whatever, something about my mm. body. But I was just kind of like, I'm just here to like, you know, enjoy training and to get really good at it and other goals. So if there is any kind of pressure towards a certain style of training or anything um, from an external source, that's not something that you personally want to do. You know, you don't have to cop that kind of thing. And yeah, I know like if you were ever to work with someone and there was any kind of ick or discomfort there, um, that's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. This is random as fuck. Scared. Do you touch your clients? I always ask before I like, you know, touch their shoulder to correct or, Mm. you know, if we're on the hip thrust, it's kind of a bit of an awkward, um, like seatbelt strap. And sometimes I'm like, oh, it's not tight enough. And they're in an awkward position. So I'll always say, um, are you okay with me touching that? And they'll always say like, yeah, of course it's fine. But I just want to make sure that I'm not just manhandling them because I've seen some like just weird shit online, basically, where it's just like, coaches being way too handsy with their clients and it's but just also, so inappropriate even outside firstly yeah always ask permission always i don't like being touched by people i don't know i mean we all know our clients but i'll always ask permission yeah bare fucking minimum yeah secondly why are you so close to your client it's not needed. i cannot see your form if i am breathing the same oxygen as you. Like I need to be a little bit far back. I've seen so many coaches at multiple different gyms that I've been to that close to their clients and overly touching them. How is your client meant to breathe? How are they meant to concentrate? And also it can be dangerous. Yeah. If you're really close to your client, constantly touching them where they're trying to do an exercise with a heavy weight, let them focus and let them pay attention. The less cueing that I do, the the more it means that you are 100% nailing it. If I actually stand there in silence and say one or two things, you are doing everything perfect. Because if you're doing something perfect and then I'm saying, make sure you brace, make sure you move your feet, push through your heels, do this. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you're pulled out of your focus and it can be a little bit more dangerous. And there's also such a thing as over cueing. Like there's no problem with having space and silence and observation. It doesn't have to be saying something so you feel like you're providing Mm. value your value is you helping when it's needed yes and you being there and stop over complicating it yeah like if your client's doing everything good great kick on love tell them doing it tell them you're doing a great job yeah going circling back to that point because i think it's really important Mm. you don't need to feel uncomfortable in pt sessions in that example your coach doesn't need to be hovering over you you don't need to be touched inappropriately Mm. i know that it is already goes without saying but if you have experienced any of that for starters i'm sorry and Mm. secondly find better amen yeah should we go into our q a i feel like that was a lot of red flags i have i could keep going if i'm honest yeah but i'm gonna withhold i agree it's funny because i'm in the coaching industry in the fitness industry and sometimes i fucking hate it yeah sometimes i lose faith when i see things on social media specifically just around just either really harmful advice Mm. towards women or if it's just putting the industry in the wrong direction that I think it shouldn't go into. Yeah. And it just makes me feel sad. But then I just try to hover back to what am I doing to make an impact? What are you doing in our little spheres? And how can we raise the standard? Because that's really what it is. I remember when we started this podcast, we always say to each other, like, how many good there's a lot of coaches the industry is quote unquote saturated but how many good coaches are there yeah like it is our godforsaken right yeah to raise the standard of the 
fucking coaching industry. I think it's our mission. It I is. I honestly think that we, I want we other put people on this <laughs> earth for <laughs> one reason <laughs> to make it better and this Literally. isn't saying we are the best no but I mean, we, are we are backing <laughs> no, i'm backing that i have a, a good service yeah you're backing it yeah. i believe that always room to grow but i am happy and proud of what it is that i have mm-hmm. to offer and i time and time again have been told about a negative experience yeah. and i just want to say again if you're a coach listening to this Continue to audit yourself, refine, Mm. ask for feedback. It goes a long way because sometimes you don't even know where your shortfalls are and it's important to ask. Agreed. And again, treat your clients like people. That goes a long way. Like the humans that That they they are. are. Let's get into the Q&A. Q&A me, baby. We're starting off with question one, which is going to lead on from this topic, which is asked yesterday, what is your biggest ick you see from other coaches? Mm. Oh, my biggest ick that I see from other coaches. Oh, to be one. honest, sorry, I'm going first. Go Practicing outside their scope, plain and simple. As you saw at the start of this episode, I was very passionate about the new whole nutrition thing. Yeah. If you don't know, it's okay to say you don't know. Stop trying to promote shit online to look bigger and better than everybody else if you are in, out of your depth. If you are out of your depth. If you're out of your depth. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I think practicing outside your scope is such a fucking ick it's also so harmful and it's honestly just not worth it yeah my gym ick is kind of gym was it a gym is that the question it's not (laughs) i thought i just completely butchered that but you're butchering it no go continue the biggest ick or one of them that i see from other coaches is dedicating so much of their content to shitting on other coaches Oh, like if everything that you put out is just either making fun of or just tearing somebody down, doing a stitch video, doing a stitch of video, coach doing something ick. massive, ick. like why do you have so much time on your hands? Yeah. Dedicate that time to educating, mm-hmm. dedicate that time to showing a different way. If you make personal digs to other coaches online, just that sassy bullshit. It's just tells me you have too much time on your hands and just focus on coaching people because isn't that why we're all here? Mm. And it also doesn't give me a sense of security in yourself as a coach if you're feeling the need to belittle other people. I am that, we are both that far in our own lane. Removed. That I just don't care. Like, of course I scroll past some things on social and think, "Mm, that's not right. But I would never make a video calling somebody out, stitching it, having a go at them, talking shit. Like, move on. On the flip side, say if you were a coach and Mm. you saw something that you didn't like and hypothetically your goal yeah is to make the industry better wouldn't you just privately message them absolutely you could say you could do things in a much better way Mm. you could say hey you know have you thought about this or you know try looking at it a different way rather than just like i see i I don't i've actually unfollowed a lot of people but i've seen like quite a lot of just like arguing about they posted this i posted that it's just honestly bullshit and it's just such a waste of energy and like, yeah, do other things with your time, guys. Educate your clients, network, connect. Yeah. I don't know, train harder, whatever. <laughs> literally <laughs> anything. Do something literally else. anything but that. So that's a nick. Was there a second question or is there only one? There's a bit of there's a bit of just a left field second question, which is your death row meal. Okay. I know this and it's just the most random fucking shit. So if you guys don't know, Amand, my boyfriend, Illy, if you're listening to this, he doesn't listen to a single episode, by the way. What a fucking rat. Anyways, he's South African and there's a specific meal called Fet Cook, which is a South African meal. And it's literally just like for any listener listening at home, you guys and Gemma, if you've ever been camping, yes. you know damper. Is it going to be in a can? You know, no, okay. you know damper, like yeah. the dough. Yeah. It's almost similar to that, but it's like fried Yum. in oil. We can't go it's wrong with healthy, that. It's not healthy, but it's fucking delicious. And so if good. I was on death row, You're that smashing. or sushi, like Japanese food. Mm. They're my two. I ate a lot of Mexican yeah, you're a Mexican girl. I'm a girl. big Mexican gal. So I think I'd yeah. be, I'd have an array of Mexican things. There'd be tacos, there'd be fajitas, mm. there'd be burritos, mm. there'd be nachos. I'd have it all. Yum. Amen. I hope that's not <laughs> my own issue. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that day never, never comes. comes but, but, you know. At least we know. <laughs> Is there something wrong with Were the Were you about to clap? 
Yeah. <laughs> We're done, guys. Okay. Go us. <laughs> Claps for Kate and Gemma. <laughs> thank you so much (laughs) i'm Gemma. thank you guys so much for listening once again if you did enjoy today's podcast please don't forget to rate it five stars on spotify we also are available on tiktok and youtube so if you're wanting to watch the full video of us being absolute dickheads head on over to our youtube you can find gem coach Gemma, kate kate morris underscore pt or you can follow us on the oi let's talk podcast on instagram thanks for listening bye bye